And Chris Wallace is such a talented guy. He's the guy that designed the Gremlins. Here are original designs he did here for Gizmo. See, it goes all the way over to the final one you see is the Gizmo they end up using. But this shows you some of the early designs that people have to go through to do these things. Now here's more of Chris Wallace's stuff. Over here, we have different concepts for the fly that he did. You can see some gizmos behind. These dogs are for a, uh, a whiskey commercial in Japan yet, which is kind of interesting. Uh, these are just different early designs of all kinds of monsters and things. Here's that poor mutated dog from Fly 2 that everybody cries when you see that poor thing. There was the original size of the gremlins that were going to be, but they were just too small. He couldn't put anything in them at all, so they decided not, not to use that size. Here's Fly 2. There's an actual Fly 2 head. And this is interesting from Naked Lunch. He made it look a little like Burroughs, the guy that wrote the thing. Now here's a thing from one of my very favorite films, The Day the Earth Stood Still. This is the original flying saucer that they used. It's used in two scenes in the film that I'm aware of. One where Klaatu is walking out of the saucer, they did a hanging miniature with it, had it in front of the camera, and he was like a quarter of a mile away, probably wasn't even him, I'm sure, walking down the ramp. Then Fox took it, because he used to reuse props all the time, cut the bottom off, because it used to be flat, added this ring of lights on here, and this little partition on here, and used it in a voyage to the bottom of the sea. Now here's some just various props. Here's Lily Munster's dress from the Munsters, or one of her dresses. She had many, I'm sure. This is actually not from the actual film of the creature from the Black Lagoon. A friend made this up, which is kind of cool. Now this airplane, the only remaining prop as far as we know of from War of the Worlds. This is the airplane when it crashes and you see the saucer hover over the top of it. Now the original War of the Worlds saucers, which are made of copper, were given to a copper drive in the 50s to a Boy Scout copper drive and they melted them down, if you can believe that. So they don't exist. Now Greg Jean made this one for the TV series that was shot in Canada, the War of the World TV series. It's made off the blueprint, so it's the same size, only this is made out of fiberglass where the other one was actually made out of copper. Here's some helmets. This is Ripley's helmet from Alien, her backpack. Behind you can see Rollerball, that's one of the helmets there, one of the backpacks from Alien. This is from X-15, this helmet. This is Robot Monster, everybody's favorite bad movie. Uh, this is Outland. We have Andromeda Strain and one of the ones from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Chris Wallace did Gremlins. He had to come up with a radio-controlled car for Gizmo to drive in. And here's what they came up with. It's a real, honest-to-goodness radio-controlled car. And then, of course, later on, they put out a toy. They didn't have the rights to this car, but if you notice the paint and all the, the decal stuff on it, the detailing looks very much like it. So they got away with it. And unless you know this, you probably think that is the car. You wouldn't have any idea. Now, Terminator 2 is one of my favorite movies. Jim Cameron, of course, did it, and uh, through his good graces, I ended up with a thing like this, the original uh, Hunter Killer tank. It was so big, we had to disassemble it to get it in here. And then down here, we have another Chris Wallace thing. It's arachnophobia. Uh, these are all the different, like, mechanical spiders they had to use. They had to do this big one for close-ups, because the little guy just wasn't good enough for close-ups, you couldn't get the detail in it. This is the armature, actually, that this was over. And then, of course, we have the old guy, and he's the guy sitting with his wife on the couch, and the reason they had to make a thing of him is the spider climbs out of his nose. And the actor wasn't real thrilled about having a real spider climb out of his nose. Here's one of my favorite pieces, it's from Aliens, but it was used again in Alien 4, or Resurrection. Here's stuff from a lot of different movies. We have Mant here from Matinee. That's the big ant that climbs up the side of the building that Rick Baker did. We have from Terminator 2, they call him Pizza Face, kind of obvious I think. It's where Arnold gets up on the truck and fires the Uzi through there and blows him apart. Uh, down here we have uh, Chris Wallace's Fly 2. This was the thing that was actually in the cocoon. You barely even saw this in the film because it was inside of a cocoon. This spaceship is very interesting. It was a thing called Night of the Creeps. And it was only used in the movie for about 10, 15 seconds, and then it blows up. Now, I loaned it to Paramount, and they used it in a Deep Space Nine and a uh, Next Generation show, and you saw more of it than you did here in that film it was made for. Now, here's the Sulaco uh, from Aliens. It's actually only built on one side, because they only shot it from one side. And we have Jack back here, of course, from American Werewolf. That's how he appeared in the theater in the very end of the movie. Now, here's some stuff from Aliens. This is the drop ship. And they call this the hero ship because it has the pilots and everybody inside. The hero ship means has all of the pieces on it. Everything is on it. This is one of the pistols from Alien, the first film. It's a model off of a real gun. 
And these are pretty heavy. These poor guys in these suits, I mean, those helmets are heavy. I tried to put on those things, and I don't know how the actors wore these things as much as they did, because they were heavy devils, I'll tell you. Now this is the nose of the Narcissus from Alien, and they back projected in these windows the people sitting in there walking around and doing things, and they, uh, this was made strictly for one shot in the film. Now here's stuff from Alien and Aliens, it's both. These are face huggers here. This is the one that was actually on Kane's face in the film. You can see there was an air bladder that used to be hooked on here at one time, and that's what made it pulsate and do its thing. This is actually built over a garden glove, and it's the one that was in the egg that flies up at Kane in there. The guy was just down inside the egg and just flew it up. This is the one that gets on Sigourney Weaver from Aliens. You can see it's a much bigger face hugger. This is from Aliens. This is the one that was in the gal inside the building, the complex, and saying, please kill me, please kill me. And it, uh, it's pretty cool. It still kind of moves a little bit. Feed me, feed me. Chris Wayless made this wonderful little piece. This is Dragon Flare, which I still think is the best dragon design ever done. This is like the hand puppet that he did that nudges those dead babies in the film. And here's a little maquette that he did of it. They needed something just to put on film to test it. And he sculpted this, I think, like in a couple of days. He did this really fast, but it looks really neat. Now, these are interesting. Here's uh, some of Rick Baker's work here. There's the full-size baby head, or an oversized, I should say, from It's Alive. These are both from American Werewolf in London, where uh, David Naughton has that horrible nightmare, and they come in cutting up everybody. Those are great faces. And just a bunch of different heads and masks I've got here from different movies, all kinds of things. Uh, well, the chimp on the left up there, that was uh, made by Rick for Greystoke. That was a test dummy. It all is cable control. They never used it in the film. And the other gorilla head, that's Sidney, the gorilla's stunt head from uh, The Incredible Shrinking Woman. Now, this is a guy you'll recognize, I'm pretty sure, from the cantina scene in Star Wars. He's uh, the guy that was kind of sitting there scratching his head, and it looks like he's got a sausage in his mouth. Only I think that is his mouth. I'm not sure. Jack Pierce gave me this around 1963. This was made for Lon Chaney Jr. and The Mummy's Curse, and that was uh, around 1944. And as far as we know, that's the only piece of, that survived of his work. So there's your first peek into Bob's basement. Right now, Bob is looking into putting his collection on display for the public, so one day others will be able to enjoy it as much as he does.